It's unfortunate. This is my big Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to the September 9th, 2020 Daytona Beach Shores meeting. It's now called to order. Before I do a roll call, I want to explain a little bit about what we're doing tonight. So we're actually having a hybrid meeting. So that means that we will have participants on Zoom that will be calling in. Uh, I don't think we have any overflow right now, but if we do, Nancy Maddox will put them in the activity room. So we will have participants in the audience here that can speak. I've received some comments. I will read those when we get to the appropriate agenda item. Um, and we do have one caller that is going to be calling in on an agenda item. And I just want to let you know, because of the technology that we're trying to do in uh, chambers, as well as the Zoom, there's going to be a four second delay in between them talking there. Um, because, you know, we've been social distancing and we've been having a couple of our council members down there because of Zoom, we're not able to do that. So because we're not distance, we're all going to be keeping our masks on just to let you know. So I certainly hope you can understand me. And again, thank you very much for your patience. And hopefully this will be the last time we have to do it like this. Thank you. And uh, Sherry, could you call the roll call, please? Mayor Miller? Here. Vice Mayor Bryant? Here. Councilmember Here. Councilmember Here. Here. Thank you, Reverend Melissa France from the Drive-In Christian Church. Uh, before we get started, Melissa, I just want to say what a beautiful, beautiful service that you put on for our Mayor Don Large. Thank it you. is just lovely, and thank you for everything you do. Thank, yes. thank you. It's nice to see you all in yeah. 3D instead of 2D this time. Will you all uh, stand and pray with me? Holy One, we pray for your love and compassion to abound as we walk through this challenging season. We ask for your wisdom for those who bear the load of making decisions with widespread consequences. And we thank you for the opportunity to serve the people of the city of Daytona Beach Shores. Help us all to act with character and conviction. Help us to listen with understanding and goodwill and help us to speak with charity and restraint. Thank you for giving our leaders a spirit of service. Help us all to see the humanity and dignity of those who disagree with us and to treat all persons, no matter how weak or poor, with the reverence your creation deserves. Finally, we ask for renewed strength to continue serving the residents with honesty and humility as we work to be good stewards of your authority. We pray this in the name of all that is good. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Councilman Kersalon, can you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As everyone is probably aware, this is our budget meeting this evening, but before we get started on that budget, I want to thank this council and the staff for working so diligently on the budget this year. Um, you know, this is a hard year going to, into it with COVID, so we just worked and did whatever we could. Um, so tonight we're going to be voting on several items. One of them, hopefully if it gets approved tonight, we will be going to the rollback rate of 5.0476. So that's a real um, hard task to do in these kind of times. So I'm very proud of my council and of the staff. We're gonna be pay paying off some of our debt that you'll be hearing about. And um, we're also paying off one debt, hopefully. Uh, so that 1.37 voted debt fiscal year 2022 uh, will be going to zero. So I just want to state that before we get started. <coughs> Thank you again, council. Um, so I'd like to call up item to adopt the year 2020-21 tentative millage rate and tentative budget stating it is now a public hearing. I so move. Um, move I, to okay. adopt the resolution. Okay. I think Councilor Sportslander has to talk her Ah, to make the yes. presentation. Yes. Okay. Thank you. But thank you, Councilor. I already Sportslander. heard it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hear it again. Okay. <laughs> 
I think Councilman Polaris wants to move you along. I, well, I don't have a presentation tonight. <laughs> Everything was presented at the, um, the workshop we had. Uh, as the mayor said, originally we had asked for the 5.23, which was our current year rate. Uh, working together, we believe we can go to the 5.0476, which is the rollback rate. So uh, for our citizens to understand their notice of proposed property taxes does show an increase. However, we're not adopting that. So their tax bill, other than what happens to their property value, which will fluctuate a little bit, um, the city is not raising taxes. We are going to roll back rate, which the state defines as a 0% change in your taxes. So we have two parts you'll vote on tonight, the millage rate, uh, which unfortunately the uh, city attorney has to read the four page resolution into the record tonight. So that'll take a little bit of time. Um, sorry. And then we'll come back and adopt the budget. Uh, I just, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the budget so I don't have to do this in two different things. The budget does have the debt reduction that we talked about included in it. Uh, and I had to add some carryover items. For example, the fire truck. We had put the money in last year's budget. We're not getting it till November. That will be carried over. We have a little bit carried over on the bocce court construction. We already had the public safety roof repair uh, carried over. So the budget looks a lot higher, but it, it's the big increase is the, the debt reduction. So otherwise that's my spiel for tonight. So Thank unless there's questions. I only have one observation. I'd like to say happy 50th birthday to you. Andy. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> okay, so now I'll open the public hearing on 2019-20 budget. The tentative millage rate of 5.0476 mil is the rolled back tech rate. City Attorney, Carrie, could you please read in its entirety the millage level resolution 2020-09? I can, and can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, as, as he noted, um, I do have to read the entire thing, including the warehouse clauses, so it will take a few minutes. That's fine. Um, so sit back and relax. Um, <laughs> normally we just read the short title, but for the millage rate, we have to read the whole thing. And so this is resolution 2020-9, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Daytona Beach Shores, Florida, adopting the tentative millage rate to be levied for fiscal year 2020-2021 by City of Daytona Beach Shores City Government in accordance with the provisions of state law. Adopting the tentative millage rate for fiscal year 2020-2021 for the city at the overall combined rate of 6.7826 mills with 5.0476 mills as operating millage and 1.7350 mills for voting. Excuse me, you have, you have, excuse me, yep, you have one re resident here. They can't, they can't hear you, John. They're, they're raising their hand. expressing legislative and administrative findings and intent, establishing the date, time, and place for the second public hearing on the millage rates to be September 22nd, 2020, and the second public hearing on the proposed budget on the same date at 6 p.m., and providing for implementation and planning administrative actions, a savings provision, conflicts, severability, and an effective date. Whereas, in accordance with the provisions of controlling state law, the city manager has submitted to the city council an annual budget for various funds of the city, as well as a plan of revenues to be generated to support that budget. And whereas controlling state law requires the annual budget to be adopted by resolution. And whereas the proposed annual budget of the city of Daytona Beach Shores has been reviewed, evaluated, and considered at various public meetings and hearings held by the city council of the city. And whereas City Council approval is required in order to establish and to approve the millage rates to be levied within the City of Daytona Beach Shores. And whereas, in accordance with the provisions of the City of Daytona Beach Shores Charter, the Code of Ordinances of the City of Daytona Beach Shores and controlling state law, the City Manager has submitted to the City Council an annual budget for the various funds of the city, as well as a schedule of taxes and revenues and proposed millage rates to fund that budget. And whereas, the City Council desires to fund an adopted annual operating budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2020 and terminating on September 30th, 2021, specifying certain projected revenues and expenditures for the operations of 
Daytona Beach Shores Municipal Government. And whereas the city's budget presumes that each city department generally will, to the best of their ability, maintain its expenditures within its allocated budget level and exercise prudence in expending funds during the course of the city's fiscal year. And whereas from time to time, circumstances and events may require that the original city budget may need revision. And whereas the city council in its judgment and discretion has the authority in the future to adjust the budget to more closely coincide with actual unexpected events. And whereas the city council has the continuing and overriding responsibility to take all necessary steps and actions to ensure that sound economic, financial, and fiscal management policies are implemented and maintained in the city for the benefit of the citizens of the city of Daytona Beach Shores. And whereas the city manager and city staff provide assistance and guidance to develop, implement, and maintain the economic, financial, and fiscal management policies of the city council for the benefit of the citizens of the city of Daytona Beach Shores. And whereas the city council is vested with the budgetary authority and control relating to the city of Daytona Beach Shores government operations the provision of adequate levels of service with regard to essential public services and facilities and the maintenance of public benefits provided and the protection of public health, safety, and welfare by city government to the citizens of the city of Daytona Beach Shores. And whereas it is the desire and goal of the city council for city government to function as an effective governmental organization. And whereas the city manager is charged with ensuring that the alignment and organization of the city's departments, offices, and functions are sound and consistent with highly productive public administration practices, procedures, and systems. And whereas the City Council has concluded that the actions taken herein will provide public positive economic and budgetary benefits to the City, and the City Council has concluded that the results of such actions will benefit the citizens of the City of Daytona Beach Shores. And whereas it is the goal and desire of the City Council to provide a continuing high quality level of service to the citizens of the City of Daytona Beach Shores with regard to the provision of essential and beneficial levels of service and the provision of adequate public facilities to serve the needs of the citizens. And whereas the City Council hereby finds and concludes that the level of service and the system of public facilities provided to the citizens of the City of Daytona Beach Shores will be positively and favorably impacted as a result of the City Council taking the necessary economic, fiscal, financial, and budgetary actions as set forth in this resolution. And whereas the City Council of the City of Daytona Beach Shores hereby finds and concludes that the actions taken herein are consistent with sound and generally accepted public management and finance principles and controlling applicable law and serve an important public purpose. And whereas the gross taxable value for operating purposes not exempt from taxation within the city of Daytona Beach Shores, Volusia County has been certified by the county property appraiser to the city of Daytona Beach Shores as $1,725,535,178. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Daytona Beach Shores, Florida as follows. Section one, legislative administrative intent and findings. The intent and findings set forth in the above recitals, whereas clauses are hereby adopted as the legislative and administrative intent and findings relative to the provisions of this resolution. Section two, adoption of tentative milling, millage rates. After careful consideration of the estimate of receipts and the estimate of expenditures of the city of Daytona Beach Shores, Florida, the city, it is hereby determined and established that the rates of taxation necessary to meet such expenses will be for each of the here and after stated purposes, the amounts estimated, declared, and hereby levied to wit. Sub one, in order to meet the estimate of general fund expenses of the city, it is hereby determined and declared that the total operating millage shall be at the rate of 5.0476 mills or $5.0476 per $1,000 of taxable value and the same is hereby levied to impose upon all non-exempt taxable property within the corporate limits of the city for the purposes of here and, or here and after described to provide the expenditures as estimated for the fiscal year 2020-2021 annual budget. The millage rate to be levied of 5.0476 mills is the rolled back to millage rate. Sub two, in order to pay interest upon and payment requirements for the outstanding general obligation bond issued to the city, and for the purpose of paying the expenses of servicing such bonds, 
It is hereby determined and declared that the debt service millage shall be at the rate of 1.7350 mills or $1.73.5 per $1,000 of taxable value. And the same is hereby levied and imposed on all non-exempt taxable property within the corporate limits of the city for the purposes here in before stated in the subsection. Voters approve certain streetscaping and improvements, including the undergrounding of utilities. The city council has had concluded that the tax rates set forth herein are fiscally prudent and sound. Section three, implementing administrative actions, communications with Volusia County property appraiser and Volusia County revenue division, tax collection, establishment of final public hearing date. The city manager is hereby directed to certify to the Volusia County property appraiser and to the Volusia County Revenue Division tax collection, the millage rates as herein set and levied for the purpose of herein stated, pursuant to the controlling laws of the state of Florida. The city manager is hereby directed to advise the Volusia County property appraiser of the city's tentative millage rates as herein before set forth, of its rolled back millage rate computed pursuant to section 200.0651 Florida statutes and rule 12D-17.0035 Florida Administrative Code and of the date, time and place at which the city will hold a public hearing to consider the tentative millage rates and the proposed fiscal year 2020-2021 annual budget. The city manager or designee is hereby authorized and directed to implement the provisions of this resolution by means of such administrative actions as may be deemed necessary and appropriate. A second and final public hearing on the aforementioned tentative millage rates and on the proposed fiscal year 2020-2021 annual budget will be held on September 22nd, 2020 at 6 p.m. in the council chambers located at 3000 Bellmead Drive, Daytona Beach Shores, Florida 32118. The city manager shall take all necessary implementing actions to provide for such public hearing. Section four, conflicts, all resolutions, or parts of resolutions in conflict with any of the provisions of this resolution are hereby repealed. Section five, savings. The prior actions of the city council of the city of Daytona Beach Shores in terms of the matters relating hereto, as well as any and all related matters are hereby ratified and affirmed. Section six, severability. If any section, sentence, phrase, word, or portion of this resolution is determined to be invalid, unlawful, or unconstitutional, said determination shall not be held to invalidate or impair the validity, force, or effect of any other section, sentence, phrase, word, or portion of this resolution, not otherwise to be invalid, unlawful, or unconstitutional. Section seven, effective date. This resolution shall take effect immediately upon passage and adoption. Thank you, Attorney Kerry, I appreciate that. You did quite well. Uh, okay, so now I will open up this for public comment prior to the adoption of the tentative millage rate. David, do I have anyone on, David, do I have anyone online that wants to make a comment? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Do I have anyone in the audience that wants to make a public comment on the budget? Okay, hearing none, um, Councilman Politis, I will now entertain a motion to adopt the tentative millage levy resolution number 2020-9 setting the millage rate of 5.0476 mills, which is the rolled back rate and combined with the general obligation bond issue rate of 1.7350 mills and the overall millage rate 6.726 mills. It's actually 7.7826. That's what mine says. Okay, I'm at 6.7826? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry if I messed with it. I so move. I second. Okay, um, I have a, a vote, a motion, and a second. Um, any discussion among our council? Okay, I just um, let's take a vote on it now, Sherry, please. House Member Plus? Yes. Vice Mayor Bryan? Yes. Council Member Criswell? Yes. Council Member Lindauer? Yes. Mayor Miller? Yes. The tentative operating millage rate is set at 5.0476 per thousand of taxable value, which is the rolled back millage rate and combined with the general obligation bond, bond issue of 1.7350 mills. The overall millage rate is 6.7826 mills. The second and final hearing on the millage rate is scheduled for September 22nd, 2020 at six o'clock p.m.
Well, if there's no other comment, again, thank you very much staff and council for working together to be able to roll back this to 5.04. Um, and we're closing the public hearing right now. So attorney Kerry, can you read just the, um, the top portion of by title? Yes, thank you. Uh, this is resolution 2020-10 and this is by short title only, thank goodness. <laughs> a resolution of the City Council of the City of Daytona Beach Shores, Florida, tentatively adopting a city budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2020 and ending September 30th, 2021, with regard to the City of Daytona Beach Shores, including revenues and expenditures and capital projects, providing for legislative administrative findings, providing for delegation to and implementing actions by the city manager, providing for conflicts, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to accept resolution 2020-10? I move we accept resolution 2020-10 as read. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on this? Okay, if not, Chair, can take a roll on that. Councilman Melinda? Yes. Councilman Prislow? Yes. Councilman Flytus? Yes. Vice Mayor Bryan? Yes. Mayor Miller? Yes. Okay, before we move on to approval of the minutes, we actually don't have any official presentations or public notices, but I would be um, negligent if I did not say, um, I want to thank uh, Chief Dubinsky and his entire staff. First of all, the only thing I had on here to begin with was, I don't know if everybody read in the paper, but about a week or so ago, the mayor of um, Ponce Inlet, Gary Smith, had a huge thank you for our assistance in a fire that took place. And talking a little bit to the chief about it, now this is called mutual aid. They assist us when we need assistance and we assist them too. And I think that's just fantastic. So thank you chief for being available for them. So the second one was this late past Labor Day weekend. Uh, thank you for everything your staff did. I know they worked overtime. I wanna congratulate you for having the leadership to call Edgewater, South Daytona, and Port Orange. I have written to each one of those mayors and thank them for the assistance they provided. If you also didn't see the, vin the video, one of our uh, POS, uh, Vinny Castellano, um, was um, on scene. There was a great video online, but I think the best part that I liked about this is we never appreciate that we have triple trained public safety. He started out as a police officer and immediately switched over to fire and put that fire out. So Chief, thank you. Can you please thank, you know, thank you so much. I appreciate everything you did. So, no, we, we had a discussion about that today with one of our residents, but again, thank you for everything you do. And I want you to know how much we appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next we'll go on to the approval of the minutes. And that was from the, I have the date right here. Uh, was that August? August 25th. August 25th. Thank you so much, councilman. You're welcome. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to approve those minutes? I'll move to approve those minutes. Thank you. Do I hear a second? A second. Thank you. Chair, can you take a roll, please? I'm sorry, is there any discussion on those minutes? Anything as they stand? If not, Chair, thank you. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Um, we do not have any items on the consent agenda tonight. So if uh, we have a report of our city attorney, would that be you, Attorney Kerry? Will you be reading that? Yes, it would. Thank you. And uh, this is for matters arising subsequent uh, from the last meeting. Okay. Um, we worked with the code enforcement department to uh, view their magistrate hearing and to review and advise on procedures. Um, I'm going to put the other mask on because this one muffles. It feels like it muffles me a lot. Oh, never mind, I misplaced it. Um, we reviewed and amended an ordinance to relax restrictions for non-conforming single family residential use designated for use as high intensity future land use classification. Um, this ordinance is going to be reviewed at the next 
this ordinance is going to be reviewed at the next planning and zoning board meeting and then it will come to you. Um, we met with city manager, building official, planning director, and public safety department chief to discuss uh, scooter, scooter safety and potential regulations. Um, we reviewed the file for the Treasure Island development project and met with the developers and city staff to discuss moving the project forward. Um, we reviewed the Go Juice application for city's economic development program subsidy and met with the owner regarding this application. And we reviewed the development agreement for the Atlantic Avenue's estates project and provided legal advice to city staff uh, for a proposed amendment of the agreement. And I also wanted to add on one more um, that, that Becky had emailed me about. Um, and, and this was um, as directed by city council at the prior meeting, uh, council member Plaid has asked us to look into um, the uh, cost of the city for payoff of the swap agreements. Um, and we worked with Kurt on that and uh, contacted several employees of Bank of America, including uh, Joe Miller, Senior Vice President of Public Sector Banking, uh, and Daniel Carboneau at Bank of America Swap Desk. And, and the bottom line is we learned that payoffs provided the city um, at first didn't include swap fees that are required to be paid uh, under the swap agreements. Um, Bank of America did eventually provide the correct payoffs before the city took any final action regarding the payoffs. Uh, we inquired as to whether there are any fees to the, uh, that went to the bank for the payoff um, in hopes of getting a reduction or waiver of the fees um, due to the bank's initial error. However, we were told the additional amounts needed to be paid in addition to principal and interest uh, weren't bank fees, uh, but were other principal and interest um, or excuse me, were fees that had to be paid to the investors of the swaps. And um, we looked into potential tort actions, uh, but determined because the city doesn't ha have any uh, monetary damages due to acting in reliance on the incorrect information, um, there wouldn't uh, be a successful tort action um, for lack of damages, essentially. So um, we did look into that and found that, uh, that there's probably uh, no reason to move forward on any litigation against Bank of America, um, any, any issues with the um, you know, incorrect information have been corrected and there was no financial loss by the city. Thank you. Any questions for Attorney Carey on that? Well, thanks for the effort, but you know, that really in, it jeopardizes their future candidacy to do any funding for the city when it comes time mm -hmm. to, if we need to borrow money. Correct. Mm -hmm. Typical corporate, whatever. But thanks for trying. Okay, any other questions? If not, City Manager Booker, can we hear your report, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we're putting the finishing touches on the new bocce ball courts, uh, construction of shuffleboard courts, which will be located between the basketball court and the existing two pickleball courts, um, will occur when we pour the new sidewalk in that area. Construction will begin on the six tennis court, uh, hopefully next week, according to the contractor, Fast Dry, uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank all our folks in community services for all their hard work and the pride in their craftsmanship on both these projects. Uh, I also want to thank council member Frizzalone for contacting the owner of Fast Dry uh, and confirming basically what we had heard from the fellow that's going to be doing the install. So thank you very much, council member. Uh, budget, I want to thank Kurt Schwartzlander, our finance director, our deputy finance director, Lori Irwin, uh, all the directors and their respective staffs for their exceptional work preparing this year's budget. Uh, under public safety, I would like at this time to congratulate Director Dembinski as being installed as the first vice president of the Florida Association of Police Chiefs. Uh, this time next year, he will be the president of that association. Congratulations, Chief. And that's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Any questions for our city manager? Okay, if not, we'll move on to Ordinance 2008, Conduct of Council when Communicating with Others. This is the second reading of Ordinance 2020-08. Attorney Carey, can you read us the title for us, please? Ordinance 2020-08, an ordinance of the City of Daytona Beach Shores, Florida, relating to conduct of mayor and council member when communicating with others on a subject that may be of interest to the city, making findings, providing for conflicts, severability, codification, and effective date. Thank you. Does 
Do we hear a motion to accept this ordinance? I move to, so, uh, to accept the ordinance as read. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on it? Yes, I'd like to uh, make some comments. Sure. Um, I want everybody to understand is what this ordinance says is a matter of law. It applies to all communications that may be of interest to the city except during city council. As examples, it will apply to communications with the city attorney, with the city manager, with any of the staff, and any other person. Answers to simple questions by citizens like, should a tennis court be named after John Doe would constitute malfeasance if the disclaimer were not also con communicated along with the short answer of yes or no. As a matter of law, malfeasance is grounds for forfeiture of office under the DBS charter and grounds for recall under the state recall statute. Unless the wording is changed, I will have to vote no. I think it puts council members in uh, too much jeopardy for e even just inadvertent errors. Okay. Madam Mayor, may I, may I ask a question? Sure. Vice Mayor Bryan, I, what you're saying is kind of going over my, to, to oh. be frank, is kind of going over my head. Can, can you give a specific detail of where something as innocuous as a, yeah. que a que question about anything would come back to, to bite us if we didn't yeah, answer? I, well, the example I gave was if out on the you know, when you're walking past the tennis court, somebody says, should we name tennis court uh, five after John Doe? Okay. And you just immediately say yes or no. And you don't say, this is my opinion and it doesn't reflect. Then that, based on the uh, ordinance, that constitutes malfeasance. So, That's right. That's why we're passing this. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, again, this goes back to when we all got sworn in. The key is when you're dealing with the public or the press or even individual staff, your opinion doesn't reflect the opinion of the council. It reflects your yeah, personal we, opinion we, we, as a private citizen, because no matter what you do, whether you wear a name tag or not, they're still going to be identified as Vice Mayor Bryan. So again, when you make an, a, 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 an answer to that citizen's uh, request or that citizen's query about uh, we're going to name it after John Doe, you know what, I can't speak for the council, but my personal opinion, yeah, we should. And that way, everyone is consistent, because even though we pass a motion, not everyone may agree on it. Like, for instance, you voiced your uh, potential objection no, to this motion, and I respect yeah. your opinion, you're entitled to yeah. it. But the, the again, the, the spirit of this is just to make sure that we don't miscommunicate to the public or anyone else. Yeah. I, I think if, if, yeah. if I may, under that particular scenario, or, or any scenario like that, I, I think our residents are, we're very blessed to have very bright, very successful residents. I mean, if you look at our, our resident base, I mean, the socioeconomic, the education that we have, I, I would, I would guess that if somebody were to ask a question that was as innocuous as that, they would already know that it would be our opinion. I mean, the way you're presenting it, Vice Mayor, let me, let me finish yeah, and then yeah. I'll give you the floor. Yeah. The way you're presenting it is that we would have to be so careful to make sure that this was our opinion only. And I think that our resident base would know, given that you need three votes, given that you're speaking as as a resident that they would know that this is your opinion without you having to cross every t and dot every i to make sure that you're you know you're eloquent to, to i i think the average person if, if 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 former mayor jennings asked me a question i gave him an answer he would know it was coming as my opinion so i don't think that we're really at risk at all uh, and I, I do agree with Councilman Politis, it does protect us. And I think we have to give the, our residents the benefit of the doubt in, in, their, in their knowledge base. Yeah. All I'm saying is the, the ordinance does not allow for that exception, that you can rely on the, uh, opinion, you know, the understanding that whoever you're talking to knows it's your opinion. You well, actually have to explicitly say, it's my opinion. I have a question uh, in the same regard. Uh, who brings the charge of malfeasance and who determines whether it is or isn't? Doesn't that come to us in the end? Well, the, the ordinance defines it as malfeasance. That, so that's, that's sort of a, 
you know, by definition, it's malfeasance if you want to. Uh, well, yeah. to answer your question, someone would have to write you out. <laughs> oh, I, I understand yeah. that, but uh, I wasn't sure whether the council has the final say on whether it is or isn't. No, I think the city attorney would tell us they would give it to someone to make a decision. Okay. Well, that's, I just wanted to know the procedure and how, how it would work. Attorney Kerry, do you have anything you want to weigh yeah. in on this? Maybe you can clarify it for us. Um, Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, certainly. Um, so the, um, the determination of uh, whether something is a malfeasance um, would typically be made by an outside referee, uh, for example. Yeah, you're cutting out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, would typically be made by an outside referee. Um, so, you know, that, that would be something we'd need to approach and, and determine um, if a complaint is made, you know, how we wanted to move forward on that. So as our, as our council, mm -hmm. you would recommend that if someone were to ask us a question, as simple as that question may be, you would say it is you would recommend to the council members tonight to say, this is my opinion, I'm speaking as, as my opinion. Would, would, would we have to press, preface every sentence by saying that, or could we speak with the interpretation that the resident would be bright enough to be able to recognize that it was our, the, the opinion of me, given that he's asking me the question or she's asking me the question. I mean, a lot of this is context dependent. If somebody is, uh, says specifically in their question, um, you know, what do you think? What's your opinion? Um, or, you know, what's your personal opinion? Um, you know, the, the answer could be answered in the context of the question. Um, but, you know, the, this is really, I think, to guard against uh, members when they um, have the weight of their office and, um, you know, may imply that, that, that they're speaking on behalf of the commission um, when in fact they're speaking of their own personal opinion. And so um, in those cases, yeah, you would want to specify this is my personal opinion uh, and not the, uh, you know, determination made by the city council. I want to clarify a little bit more. Uh, Councilman Trezablon has been doing a lot of work at the tennis courts. If someone says to him, uh, when do you think that tennis court will be done? I mean, that's a factual thing that he can say yeah, November, November 1st. Right. right? The, yeah, this ordinance applies to opinions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if it's a factual question and answer, then you don't need to preface it by saying it's your opinion. Right. Now that we clarified that, does the council still feel this is something we want to go forward with? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. right. Then I need a motion. I did. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Are we ready to vote? Okay. Yeah. All right. Can you take a vote, please, Sherry? Councilmember Yes. Councilmember Yes. Councilmember Yes. Council Excuse. Yes. Attorney Voss, do you have something to say? Yes. Did, did you, you want ask to add for, something? Did you ask for public yes. comment? Did you ask for public comment? No public yeah, this oh, is, I'm this sorry. Is a public no, comment. I'm sorry. This is a public <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, do okay. we have any comment on this? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you do have something you want to say when you come up to at, on this particular topic? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Just state your name and um, address, and then if you would, I know you filled out a form for yes. something else. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's Rick Brown, uh, twenty nine seventeen oh six ten uh, nine zero three. Um, yeah, just uh, and I appreciate your remarks there, and, and certainly uh, Councilmember uh, Apoyas for trying to make truncate this and make it on human terms. One of the problems we have today, uh, especially it's always emphasized under the term of fake news, is how people can take a story, twist it, drop a couple of words here, a couple of words there, and then next thing you know, the story is being passed around as, oh, well, this is what the council officially said. So I think it's very important that it be clarified that this is my personal opinion and not the opinion of it. And it's a small thing to do. And of course, we count on you as our leaders to take that extra step. Your average citizen is going to try and, you know, again, everybody hears what they want to hear. And if they say, oh, I want to name it after John Doe, oh, he said it was okay. And then that's how it gets spread. And then that causes a lot of ill will. So I, I support very strongly the fact that you, you do emphasize that. Madam Mayor, may I speak? Oh, I, I, I completely agree with that. I think that's a very good uh, analogy of uh, and depiction of the truth. And I think you're 100% correct. Thank you for your feedback. 
All right, so next we will be going on to um, ordinance 2020-09. This is the public beach access walkway dedicated to the city by Aruba Ventures. Do we have a resolution on this? An ordinance, yes. okay. Excuse me, um, this I'm sorry. is Becky. Excuse me, yes. this is Becky. Yes, Becky. Um, did you finish the vote? Attorney Kerry was going to um, read the did title. Did you finish the vote? Yes. Yes. Oh, I apologize. We finished the vote. It was a uh, four to one vote. Oh, I apologize. No, that's all right. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you. All right. If you could read the title for us, please, okay. for 2020 This is Ordinance 2020-09, an ordinance of the City of Daytona Beach Shores, Volusia County, Florida, accepting dedication of public beach access easement from Aruba Ventures, LLC, pursuant to section 7.05 of the city charter, providing for conflicting ordinances, severability, and providing an effective date. Thank you. Do we hear a motion to accept 2020-09? I move we accept uh, ordinance 2020-09. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Any comment on this particular one? This is basically routine, right? Yes, correct. So. Yes. yes. And this is also a public hearing, so we need public right. Okay, comment. thank you. Is there any comment? I have a question for Stuart, if you don't okay, mind. certainly. Stuart, I remember reading the easement agreement. Isn't the Aruba the one who's going to insure it, and then they also maintain it? Correct, correct. That's what I just wanted to make sure. I, I thought so, but I wanted to be at it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other public discussion out there on this? If not, Jerry, can you take a roll? Yes. Can you make the motion? That's all right. Okay. Yeah. Mel, Mel made the motion. I second. Yes. 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 Okay. Next, we are going to go on to regular site plan RSP. One two zero two zero zero one eight oceans twenty five townhouses. Before we get started on this, I want to just do a little bit of background on this, and I'm going to probably refer to you, Councilman Frizzalone, um, Fred Hyatt, and Stewart. So th this developed in our economic development plan, and because of the Sunshine Law, I'm not privy to going in those. So what I hear about is when you do too, Councilman Frizzalone represents our city at that. So I'm just gonna go a little bit into the background. I have quite a few comments that I'm going to read tonight. And it sounds like they're almost verbatim, but they refer to a PUD in uh, 1980, which was four, four years ago. I'll, I'll just go over this and then I'd like you to answer some questions. So this was 40 years ago. And I know when the property was purchased by Doug Cook, it had already been changed to multi-use. So I don't quite understand why we're going back to something in 1980. Then as recollection, and Sturgey could probably come up here and, and help me with this. So my recollection is because it was a multi-use. Mixed use, Madam Mayor. Mixed use, mixed use, mixed use, okay. So it was a mixed use. Um, so that entitled someone, and our original plan looked something like this, that it had maybe a doctor's office, a couple retail shops, maybe a little coffee shop. Then above it would have been four stories. So altogether, we were looking at five stories. Correct. Am I correct? That is correct. And there are also two detached um, outbuildings um, closer to South Atlantic Avenue that would have been used for commercial use as well. That that's what was approved in the concept plan that was attached to the rezoning ordinance mm -hmm. in 2005. Okay, thank you. So then at that time, we had it appraised with, you know, what we wanted to put on there was about $1.1 million. It was that what the appraisal came in? More or less. Okay, all right. So then um, we had some feedback from our residents here and they did not want the four to five stories for whatever reason. Um, so if it would have been a developer and not the city owning it, they could have went ahead with their plan. Is that correct? Yes, they would have been entitled to it. And an entitlement is essentially a property rights that pr that's protected under law. Okay, thank you. So when we went back, if I recall correctly, we asked residents, well, what would you like to see there? You know, what, what would satisfy you? And my, my recollection was that it was townhomes. So That's my recollection as well, Madam Mayor. Okay, so we talked about townhomes and then we had Mr. Hopkins here and a couple of other people that had an initial drawing and people uh, didn't like the way that looked. So they went back 
redid them and had other town homes put there now. So this is about the least that we can put. I mean, there's nothing else that we can go down to. Did, did I misrepresent anything? No, no Madam Mayor, there, there, there are two, I'm sorry. You, you. Certainly, yeah. I think the, the only other thing is we did have two developers who wanted to put a hundred, I'm sorry. Okay. Can you hear me, ma'am? <laughs> Uh, there was two developers that I believe we could put 85 condos um, as, as well as three restaurants. And when we presented that to the residents, the residents did not like that at all, particularly the restaurants and the height of the, of the uh, 85 condos. So we backed off that uh, because of the resident feedback. Okay, thank you for that. Um, anything else I need to know on that before we go on? I just wanted to make sure that I had their history correctly and that um, everyone else did too. So that, that is pretty much correct, Madam Mayor. The only addition is that there was a development agreement that was signed between the developer, um, who's the applicant, and the city of Daytona Beach Shores, and that added another layer of entitlement and restrictions regarding the property. Okay. And that's basically the, the primary uh, controller right now in terms of this development, in addition to the land development code zoning for mixed use and the comprehensive plan. Okay, and this went before our PNZ and they recommended approval. That, that is right? correct, Madam Mayor. Okay. All right, thank you, I'm okay now. So, uh, so again, this is a regular site plan, RSP 20, 12020018, the Ocean's 25 townhouses. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, are you are you going to go over? I, I can give a presentation if you want, Madam Mayor. No. no? Okay. All right. Or I can simply give my like recommendation. It. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Is it the the pleasure of the council? Okay. Does anyone? I know we've gone over this before. We've seen this before. Is there anything else that we need to look at at this time? Vice Mayor Bryan, is there anything else? Which, that uh, We're on Oceans 25. I think they're going Okay, ahead. yeah. I, I need to disclose that I attended a planning and zoning meeting uh, for that dealt with Oceans 25. And I, I, I state here for the record that any decision I make is only based on information in this meeting and not on any information I may have heard uh, okay. prior to this. Thank you for disclosing that. Um, so this is the presentation. Is there anything we need to look at? I think. Sure, Madam Mayor. I'll, I'll just go through okay, it real go, quickly. Go, go, okay. um, this project that you see before you at this moment is RSP 12020018, which is the Oceans 25 project. The project is located at 2900 South Olympic Avenue. The city currently owns the property and is on the contract with Oceans 25 LLC parent company. Um, Ocean 25 LLC is the applicant developer. The property is 2.13 acres and the proposed use is townhomes uh, are, are for townhomes, 25 fee simple units. So in terms of the, the property rights associated with this property, um, staff went all the way back to the early 80s to determine what the zoning was to ensure that it wasn't a part of the PUD and the current zoning map and the, the all prior zoning maps up to the early 1980s show that um, it is not a part of the PUD. And in 2005, the property was rezoned to mixed use development. There's also another layer of uh, entitlement, as I mentioned earlier, which is the development agreement between the city and the developer. So what I did was um, I created a table that essentially shows uh, different standards under the mixed use uh, zoning district and different parameters in terms of general development. Uh, relative to what's being proposed. And as, as you'll see uh, in this summary analysis that all of the requirements for both the mixed use and the development agreement are essentially met. There are some variations and the variations that you see are essentially accounted for in the development agreement. So in other words, uh, they didn't go to a board for a variance or anything like that. They're just sticking to the contract and sticking to the zoning. And the contract that I'm referring to is the development agreement. Um, and just a quick example, um, if this development agreement was not approved by the city council and if the site plan did not come before the city council tonight, whomever owns the property either today or in the future could have developed the property uh, up to 60 or 75 units uh, on the property in addition to up to 20% of commercial um, footprint on the property. But instead what we're seeing tonight is only a 25 unit townhome complex. Um, the setbacks have, are a little bit different 
um, from what is typically associated with a mixed use district. And the reason for that is because um, the building is lower. If you look at the building height, the building height for this property, for this development is only 24 feet relative to what was uh, approved in the 2005 zoning, which was five story, 50 feet. There's also um, going to be a dedication of a force main easement to the city because the city has force main that are uh, essentially running through the middle of the property. So the only outstanding item that we have with regards to the development agreement is the dedication of the sewer force main easement. And that will occur after ownership changes hands. In other words, after the property has been sold. And the reason for that is because the owner can't dedicate an easement to us without having ownership of the property. And we can't dedicate an easement to ourselves because it would conflict with the doctrine of merger. So general requirements that is typical for any site plan. Um, there's due public notice, there's comprehensive plan consistency, development, uh, land development code consistency. And as you can see, there are check marks next to all of those. And that's because um, all those requirements have been made. As you mentioned, Madam Mayor, I believe it was July 13th of, of this year, the Planning and Zoning Board did look at this uh, site plan and they did recommend, rec recommend approval of this project as well as required um, by the city's land development code, the review part that is. So all the relevant staff have looked at this, all the relevant departments, including engineer, legal, and of course, public safety. And, and they all, uh, all their, their issues have been addressed and they all are recommended approval of this particular project as well. So this is just an overview or an aerial view of the property. As you can see, it's, uh, it has three frontages along Ridge Road, South Atlantic Avenue, and Ocean's West Boulevard is to the east of Clove Leaf North and to the west of St. Kitts and Tuscany Shores condo. This is a street view from Atlantic Avenue. And this is a, a reduced version of the site plan that is before you tonight for your consideration, council members. Um, as you can see, there's three buildings on this uh, site plan. Uh, building A and B are to the northwest and to the east of the, of the property and building C is to the south and it's adjacent to Ocean's West Boulevard. Building A and B have nine units each and building C has uh, uh, seven units. So you'll also notice that there's two access points to this property and they both uh, are connected to Ocean's West Boulevard. Uh, the, the Ocean's West, I'm sorry, the, the driveway or connection that is the easternmost connection on the property um, will, be, will be connected to Ocean's West Boulevard. And there's also a cut through or cut through through the, the median that's there. And the reason why there's a cut through to the median there and, and that's being proposed by the developer is so that people who utilize the, the site can have a left turn onto Ocean's West Boulevard and not send them down southwestbound on Ocean's West Boulevard. So these folks um, who utilize this cut through will be able to access South Atlantic Avenue directly. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier that there are uh, a force main, two for, force mains on the property. Um, one of them is abandoned and one of them is active. And um, it obviously doesn't make any sense to build on top of force mains, especially sewer ones. And so the, ab the abandoned force men will be uh, removed and the active force men will be relocated to the west side of the property. So this is the landscape plan and it looks a little bit noisy, but what we need to focus on is the box to the lower left, which basically shows that the number of trees that are required by the code, the tree mixture that's required by the code, the green area that's required by the code have all been exceeded and in some cases even doubled, beyond double. So this is the artist rendering of building A from inside the property. This is an artist rendering of building B, which is basically the one that's uh, adjacent to South Atlantic Avenue. What you can see there, and I know there's been some comments about the wall, but I just wanna remind uh, the council that I believe the wall was actually um, added in at the last minute by the developer at the request of, of, of various citizens. And so this wall is gonna be a block wall and it's gonna be 42 inches high, which is basically you know, about waist height for the average person. This is the artist rendering of building C. This is the one that's adjacent to Ocean's West Boulevard. Uh, there's just a few things I wanna point out about this wall and this area here. Um, the first thing is that the wall is, is going to be um, contained within the two driveways, the, the Eastern and the Western driveway. And the wall itself will actually have four gaps in between it. Um, and the reason for that is, and, and why it's not continuous is because the city currently has um, lighting bollards there. And obviously if the wall were to be continuous, um, you, the city would have to remove those lighting bollards. And obviously that's an issue for, for safety and for visibility at night. 
So this is just a perspective uh, comparison. Um, this is what was approved in 2005 by the city council. As you can see, is a five-story mixed-use development. And what you don't see here are the two detached buildings that I mentioned earlier that would have been used for commercial purposes adjacent to South Atlantic Avenue. So the next steps um, that are currently underway actually is um, for the developer is to receive building plan and permitting approval from the city. Um, as you see there um, in parentheses, the, the plans are currently under review. They're about 50% under, uh, under uh, reviewed. Um, the next step would have been the acquisition of non-city permits. But um, I just got an email today from the engineer of record who essentially stated that all the non-city permits are in hand. Um, so after step one is completed, which is the acquisition of city approval for building permits, um, within 15 days, according to the sales contract, ownership transfer will occur. And thereafter, um, construction can start. Um, and also in addition to that is a plat or subdivision um, review by the city council and recordation with the clerk of court um, to subdivide the property and dedicate the easement to the city of Daytona Beach Shores. And there's also a deed restriction that goes along with the development agreement as well. So staff has looked at all the requirements, the legal requirements and professional requirements that's, uh, that we're obligated to do. And, and we are recommending approval contingent upon the dedication of the sewer force main easement prior to the issuance of the certificate of occupancy. If there's any questions for staff, I'll be happy to take those. And I also know the engineer of record is here um, who can speak on behalf of the property owner and the project as well. When, when is the review? Going oh, to be, when will the review be complete? Um, I'm guessing Fred probably, you want to speak to that, Fred? I said probably another seven to 10 days. Okay, that was seven to 10 days. And you don't see any uh, big issues that may, may come up? Uh, as the city planner, I don't get to review billing plans. Um, Yes, he's referring to the building plans. Yeah, normally we, uh, my name is Fred Hyatt, if community services director. Normally uh, we would do the site plan review and then that would go through the process and come to the council for their approval. Once that's approved, then the uh, developer would submit their uh, construction plans, the actual building permit plans, but we're um, trying to move this project along. So we agreed to do a concurrent review. So we've been reviewing the building plans as we've been reviewing the site plan. So um, that's not something that is, it's just, it's a staff function and it'll, it will uh, provide comments and, it, and, and so that we get the plans consistent with the Florida. Yeah, I was just there. asking, based on what you know now, you think it's 10 to 12 days and do you see anything that could be a problem? No, I mean, you know, there's just going to be minimal comments that you normally have with any building okay. review, but it's nothing Excellent. substantial. Thank you, Fred. Okay, Derek, do I hear a motion? Do I hear a motion to accept this? I think Rick should do that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have public comment. Well, I just wanted to point out clarification of the report. I don't know if I understood. Okay, Stuart, he, he might have a question. Yeah, uh, just a point of clarification again, Rick Brown, uh, Pollution 10 903. Um, yeah, who's paying for the sewer movement and what is the estimated cost? Yes. Is, that, is that the only question you have? Yeah, that wasn't okay. covered before. Madam Mayor, uh, the, the developer will be removing the, the sewer force main and relocating it but the city has contributed $100,000, um, no more than $100,000. And this is consistent with the development agreement that was approved by the city council in March of this year. Okay, thank you. Do I hear a motion to accept this uh, RSP? Motion to accept the RSP. A second. Okay, all right, before we uh, take a final vote, I do have some public comments that were sent to me. This first one is from Patricia Collette Brown. She lives at 2917 South Atlantic Avenue, Unit 803. Um, she is opposed to changing the use of this tiny green area that now houses our utilities and is used by the public. The next comment is from Braba Traviti, also at 2917 South Atlantic, Unit 602. I'm writing to express my concern regarding the proposed overly dense construction project at 2900 South Atlantic Avenue, Daytona Beach Shores 32118. 
the proposed 25 resident development is to be situated on a piece of land just barely over two acres in size that is already packed with utility easements and was originally designated for community use when the maximum density PUD was established in the 1980s. The proposed essentially solid concrete walls placed just 15 feet from the sidewalk property boundaries with no room for any green belt vegetation due to utility easements will also act as a street noise sound reflector and amplify to all surrounding residents. The townhouses are scheduled to have low cost asphalt single roofs, not tile roofs that would blend in with the adjoining development. This will serve to further enhance builder profits at the expense of being an eyesore and a wind safety hazard. The type of irresponsible development makes a mockery of the town's motto, life is better here. Please do not compromise the beauty of the area and quality of life by approving this short-sighted profit-oriented project. Thank you for your attention to this communication. My next communication is from Robert Martin, also at 2917 South Atlantic Avenue, Unit 805. We write to oppose approval of the proposed site plan RSP 12020018 Ocean 25 Townhomes, 2900 South Atlantic Avenue, item 11D on the September 9th City Council agenda. This two acre parcel was originally designated for community use when the maximum density POU was established in 1980. It is now proposed to be used to develop high density row houses surrounded by a high concrete wall. There will be apparently no room for landscaping between the wall and the sidewalk. The wall will intensify the road nose from South Atlantic, a significant issue for nearby residents. The developer may also adversely affect the drainage problem already on Ridge Road. The design of the row houses appear to specifically in inexpensive asphalt single, single roofs, which constitute a wind hazard and conflict with the upscale ambience of the adjoining property. It will result in lowering the value of nearby properties. In short, the proposed site plan is inappropriate use of the property that is contrary to our common goal of keeping Daytona Beach Shores beautiful. My next uh, comment is from William Beck, also 2917 South Atlantic Avenue, Unit 806. I would like to suggest that the proposed new townhouses be required to match as closely as possible to the existing townhomes, tile roofs, etc. Okay, those were the only comments that I have right now from Zoom. Um, David, do we have any more comments? No, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Brown, if you'd like to come up then. Yeah, and answer that too. You were sent this letter here, which I have a copy of. If you'd like to read it, also come right up and read it. Okay, I'll, I'll read that first. I, I'm sorry, I did not. Um, I did not get this through. Okay, I'll have a public. It was um, sent to you about two weeks ago. Okay, Mayor Miller, this is from Joseph Lauterbach. Um, I don't have his address here, but um, Mayor Miller, the Shores has always been the jewel of the Daytona Beach area. The reason I moved here is life is better in the Shores. Where is the arch architectural review on Ocean's 25 townhomes? There are low income units on ISB with better design, building materials, and lush landscaping buffers to the roadway. The new Chase Bank created a complimentary landscape area to the front Atlantic Avenue, as it should be the standards in the shores. This development will have only a fence and buildings on Atlantic Avenue. This is not the upscale look the shores has strived for. I invested $500,000 to update my home on Ridge Road because I'm in the shores, just two homes away from Ocean's 25 townhouses. The Shores Review Board should hold the high standards they developed, not rubber stamp a development for more tax base. This is wrong on all levels. And I'm sorry, he does have his address here. So it's Joseph Lauterbach, 2837 Ridge Road. Um, okay, Mr. Brown. Thank you. I 
Apologize if you didn't receive that previously. Um, uh, again, my name is Rick Brown. You have it up on the board there. Uh, again, uh, the Ocean's Den 903. Um, first of all, I want to thank I want to thank Rick for his loan and uh, especially uh, Stuart Cruz for the time that they spent with me going over this over the past year. Um, and uh, you know, I've, I've attempted to come to some sort of resolution with the plans that you proposed. I certainly understand the pressure that the city council is going under to try and maintain a budget, and all of this is uh, is being witnessed through cr green glasses, as I call it, through all the council members, because you're, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing money. I, on the other hand, see what I have to look out my window every day. Um, now, you mentioned that the PUD is old news. Well, okay, when I bought my property 22 years ago, okay, it was not old news. And the changes made in 2005, and correct me if I'm wrong, none of you were on the council when that happened. There was a number of individuals that did things, shall I say, somewhat underboard. And I will compliment both the mayor and several of the council members for their willingness to be ab above board in the current discussions. Um, and so, you know, a lot of these things got passed under the table and under the, without the knowledge of the residents. So for you to say that these other developments were approved by the citizens is a misconception on all fronts, because had I been involved in it, I certainly would have, wouldn't have approved it. And any of my neighbors, had they known about it, would not have approved it. Okay, that said, I, you know, it's been brought up that it violates the, uh, the uh, original intent of the PUD which was, and, and again, I researched this property all the way back to the 1930s. I didn't stop at just 85 or 2005, okay? The whole reason this has never been developed is because it's just not a viable place to put that dense of uh, property in that area. Bell Mead was responsible enough not to develop it. And of course it's been passed around everybody looking for dollar signs ever since that time. Okay, so, um, you know, we're gonna have to be dealing with several of the points that were already brought up. I'm mostly concerned about not only the blight that it's gonna put on the, 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 the beauty of uh, Daytona Shores, which is the whole reason I bought here to begin with, but also the noise is going to be atrocious. I know the police chief did his best to try and police the area, but there's still loud trucks, no mufflers, play, uh, you know, motorcycles with no mufflers. All of that sound will be amplified up into it. Um, now, I have attended several of the meetings, and I apologize I wasn't able to attend all of them because of the COVID and some health issues. But I assure you, I will continue to be opposed to this development as much as I can. And as far as any other involvement with citizens, no one attends the fire until after the flames appear. And a lot of people aren't aware of what's going on there. Mr. Um, Brown, I'll just ask you to finish your last point, please. Okay. Um, again, I, and I've stated this before, once that scar has been placed upon the city, uh, it's not going to go away, at least not in my lifetime. Uh, and I suggest that to the council uh, member Prithalone that if he likes this development, he's more than welcome to put it across from his condo. But this place where it's located is not the place to put this type of development. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Madam Mayor. Yes. For the record, uh, I don't appreciate the underhanded comments that you made about previous administrations being implying that they were crooked. Uh, I think that is out of hand. Thank you, Councilman. I want to respond to that because, if I may, the mayor and I have been in touch for years and years. Mr. Brown, no, you have, I'm sorry, you know. Okay, well, I personally knew council members, and I'll beg to differ with you on that. Okay, um, Carol, did you have a comment? Uh, you'll need to come up here, I'm sorry. Okay, and again, um, if you could fill out a form and give it to Sherry before, okay. Thank you. This, Carol Christopher, Ocean's Grand, this just came to my mind as we were talking about all of the impact. Um, I don't know if you're all aware of the uh, PUD, P-U-D, that's uh, the four or five condos on the west side of uh, Oceans West. And I think there's about three condos on the other side, condo buildings. A portion of uh, our association dues goes into this PUD, which helps pay for uh, subsidizing the uh, golf course. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if they are going to be considered or a part of that PUD. Thank you, Karen. Because that would impact uh, income 
coming into the golf course. Carol, if I can make a comment, are the townhomes at the oceans where I live? They are not part. They are not part, and they were given the option to, I, yeah, to join yeah. when they were first built, but the residents, for whatever reason, chose not to because they didn't want to pay the extra 20 bucks a month or whatever it was because there weren't enough golfers. So I would assume that might be a wrong assumption, but that might be something you want to bring up when they uh, talk about the HOA documents that you may want to approach them and give them that opportunity to join if that's what you what you would like. Right. Um, I don't know that would because the HOA, um, HOA is mandated in the documents. Right. So they will have an HOA. That would have to be a question that would come up to the board for the golf course. Yes. But I would just like to have that come up for discussion because it's kind of, I don't know. Well, that would be a, that would be an issue for the HOA to decide okay. in the documents. Thank you, Carol. Ron. Big Tim. Tony Ramazuski, Four Oceans West Boulevard, Cloverleaf North. Uh, I, I heard Stu talk about the aisle, the beautiful aisle that we have, uh, and and I understand that that's going to be, well, maybe could, I, cause I couldn't hear back there. What, what's going to happen to that? We're going to lose that part, part. How much are we going to lose? Um, because I just enjoy that beautiful aisle as I drive down. So, yeah, could you? Yes, go ahead. Please, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So it's about a 25 to 30 foot gap um, or cut through the median. Um, the rest of the median will remain the same. With the existing landscape? Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, do we have any other comments on this issue or on this ordinance? Okay, if not, um, Sherry, can you take a vote, please? Okay. Councilman Priswell? Yes. Councilman Lindauer? Yes. Councilman Flaitis? Yes. Vice Mayor Bryan? Yes. Mayor Miller? Yes. I, I would like to ask just a couple of quick questions. Of Stewart or? Uh, of uh, maybe the builder or? Uh, uh, Mr. Hopkins, would you like to come up? This is Joe Hopkins and will you say your firm again, please, Joe? Yes, good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Um, my name is Joe Hopkins. I'm an engineer with the Performance Group at 100 Marina Point Drive in Daytona Beach. Um, first, I, I can't thank Stuart enough, a great presentation. Um, Thank you all for, for assisting us in getting through this process um, and, and thank Fred and his staff, everyone. Uh, I can't thank everybody enough. Uh, it's been a very smooth process, um, very rewarding. We've uh, secured all the permits. Um, we're under the final review right now, as uh, Stuart said and Fred said, on the building plans um, and we are moving right along. Um, the permits for relocating the force main are in hand. Uh, we're ready to go forward with that as well. And uh, all that work, all that utility work will be done all at the same time. Uh, we won't piecemeal it out, do one part and then remobilize. It'll all be done at one time. It's a much more efficient that way. Um, we're excited and uh, we really appreciate your support and thank you so much for helping us uh, get through the process. Thank you. I, I just have two quick questions. Yes, sir. Assuming you get approval in 12 days, when do you expect to break ground of the building plans? Uh, we're negotiating contracts right now, so I would think within 30 days, 30 days uh, after and, closing on the property, we would be able to start construction. And has have these two delays caused any delay on, on the, your end? Pardon me? Have the two delays the city council taking this up caused any delays on your end? Um, I, I don't, uh, not necessarily, no, sir. Okay. No, sir. Thanks, that's all. No. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think we voted on that. So, all right, so now we'll move on to new business. The first new business item is ordinance 2020-10 amendment to Shores 109 LLC, City of Daytona Beach Shores development. Um, Attorney Karen, can you read that ordinance for us, please? Yes, just give me a moment to pull to it. Or is there no, is there a ordinance on? Yes. Okay. okay. You, have, you have it? Okay, yes, I great. have it. Thank you. Ordinance 2020-10, 
an ordinance of the city of Daytona Beach Shores, Florida, relating to approval of amendment to the Shores 109 LLC, city of Daytona Beach Shores development agreement pertaining to property located at 109 Dunlawton Boulevard in accordance with the provisions of the Florida Local Government Development Agreement Act as set forth at sections 163.3220 to 163.3243 Florida statutes, providing for implementing administrative actions, providing for conflicts, providing for a savings provision and the effect of the ordinance, providing for severability, providing for non-codification as well as correction of scrivener's errors and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Do we hear a motion to accept this ordinance? Motion to accept the ordinance. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Do we have a discussion on this or would you like uh, Mr. Cruz to explain what is going on at 109? At your pleasure, Madam Mayor. Thank you. You want me to? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ordinance 2020-10 is an amendment to the development agreement between the City of Daytona Beach Shores and Shores 109 LLC. So just a quick background for those of you who may not uh, remember, Madam Mayor, uh, the property that is subject to this development agreement is located at 109 Dunlawton Boulevard. The property owner, applicant and developer is Shores 109 LLC. Uh, the property size is just under a third of an acre. The proposed use is for a restaurant and residential apartment on top. And the entitlements or property rights associated with this property um, are retail service commercial district and the development agreement that is subject to the amendment proposal tonight. Uh, the application came in on July 23rd, 2020 from the applicant um, because of the need to reconfigure and scale down the plan due to higher than expected construction costs. That is uh, what the applicant has conveyed to the city. And um, we know that construction costs are always going up. So what I've done here is a summary analysis of the original deed development agreement and the proposed amended development agreement. And I'll just go quickly over the, the proposed changes. Um, so for the development, underground exfiltration, which is basically the stormwater system that all these condos on the beach side have under their buildings uh, is what was being proposed for this particular site. Um, but due to costs, it's being changed to surface retention. Um, the outdoor dining covered patio um, is also being cut in half more or less. Um, the seating is also being cut in half, as you can see in the table all the way to the right. Um, there was an outdoor restroom that would have been um, built onto the north end of the property and, and now that's being eliminated and the restroom will remain in, inside. Um, the parking spaces obviously have been reduced as a result of the reduction in the square footage of the outdoor dining. The agreement is also proposing a sign monument, a monument sign in the right of way, which is basically the alleyway to the east of the property, in addition to landscaping, parking and stormwater. Um, the original plan had five deviations, but now there's an additional deviation that's being proposed. And the reason for that is because the monument sign that's being proposed in alleyway is not permitted by code. Offsite advertising is not permitted by code unless it's the government, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so this is an additional deviation that's being requested by the developer. In terms of the public benefits, the city's contributions and overall development goals um, associated with the approved development agreement that is already recorded, um, there is no change that's being proposed to those. So the city's not, given more money or anything like that. So in terms of the general development agreement requirements, due public notice has been provided. Uh, the proposed development agreement, the amendments um, are consistent with the comprehensive plan and the land development code. And of course, chapter 15 of the LDC, which governs development agreements. All the adequate, or, or I'm sorry, all the requisite staff departments have reviewed this, including, including legal and um, the fire division and uh, all their comments have been addressed. So this is just a quick aerial view of the property. As you can see, it's just across on the north side of Dunlawton Boulevard across from Genovese Plaza and it's in between the CVS and the Ocean's Edge Veterinary Clinic. This is the city alloy system that's to the east and north of the property. This striped area is the public alleyway that will be utilized by the developer to put the stormwater and monument sign. And this is what the building looks like today. And this is the original uh, concept plan that was approved by the city in, uh, I believe, uh, earlier this year. And what you can see, the red line is the building footprint in the proposal, and the green line is the patio, the covered patio footprint. And as you can look on the right in the public alleyway, you see a whole bunch of parking and asphalt. In the revised concept plan that's being proposed um, as part of this development agreement tonight, um, you'll see 
you'll, you'll see that the, the covered patio has been reduced by half and the little bump out to the north side of the, the building on the basically the red footprint has been eliminated. And in the right side of the uh, right hand portion of the plan, you'll see the public alley and you'll also see the water stormwater retention area and the little blue thing down there on the lower right is that where the monument sign will go more or less. And so that's such a stormwater. That's just an exhibit to show what the stormwater pond could look like. I'm sorry, Stuart, when you're saying monument, so that's whatever the name of the restaurant would be. That's yes, it's an identification sign. Okay, right. okay, thank you. You're welcome. So this is um, the public alleyway as it exists today. And this is one of the reasons why the city is contributing uh, the monies to the developer because um, the the public that utilizes the the current um, that would be utilizing the alleyway are currently utilizing the, the the owner's property to the left and so to remove all of these improvements here it would be an exorbitant amount of money in addition to having to relocate the sewer lift station that's on the partially on the property owner's property as well and so it's a, it's a win-win situation for the city in the sense that we don't have to relocate any of these items in order to facilitate and, and do our, our, our public obligations to the residents in this area. So another thing that you'll notice that has changed is that based on the, on the original development agreement, uh, the blue line that you see in the middle is the, develop, is the public cross access easement that would have been dedicated to the city. This is what it looks like today because of the shift in of um, the parking area and the stormwater. The sewer easement area remains unchanged. This was the original rendering, rendering that was approved in the development agreement. And as I mentioned, the covered patio has been eliminated and the outdoor dining area has been reduced by approximately 50% uh, or so. So what you can see is that the architectural style and the improvement on the general property and the facade of the building remains the same. And so in staff's opinion, uh, the, the benefits and and the improvements that are being made on the property um, will be a win-win for both the developer and the property, I'm sorry, the developer and the city in the sense that this outdated, outmoded building and property that hasn't been occupied by any business since 2004 will be redeveloped. And of course, there'll be an extra restaurant in the city of Daytona Beach, Georgia, which is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. So the next steps is uh, site plan approval and there's conditional approval. There's just some minor things that needs to be worked out with the project engineer. Um, and then there's also city and non-city permit acquisition. Um, it's my understanding that plans are currently being reviewed by the building department as well. Um, and after that is construction. The development agreement period is for five years and that would remain the same. If there's uh, any questions for me, I'll be happy to take those. And I know the developer is here as well. The owner is here as well. Staff is recommending approval as presented. Any other questions? Yeah, I, uh, how soon after approval would they be starting to? Uh, redo this and get the project up and running. Uh, I will leave that up to the property owner to okay. to speak to that. But I know he's excited. <laughs> Is that the only question for staff? Do I have any other one? Anything else from Stuart mm -hmm. before? Okay. Yes. Okay. Brenda. Is it yes. Is that legal? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Brendan Gabb with forty one ninety Halifax Drive and the owner of. Or, a member of the Shores 109 LLC. Um, you know, COVID's kind of changed everything. So kind of excited to get going on a small project that we can kind of have some activity with some uh, quick in and out and, uh, you know, different type of dining than what we do across the bridge, which is uh, becoming more challenging these days, to be honest with you. So we would um, hope to get into construction, um, you know, late this year, you know, because um, what are we, uh, two more weeks away from maybe a second reading. And then, um, like he said, um, site plan is basically done with some minor comments and then building plans are submitted, I believe. So I'm um, on a review, but um, we're excited and hoping to go into it you know, late this year. Do, you, do I understand, do you have someone to occupy it already or you're going to redesign it first and then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no commitment from us to operate or or tenant, okay. nothing signed. We're, we're committed to redevelopment and then, you know, decide, you know, at that point, we're very capable of, uh, of operating it, but I can't tell you which way we're going to go at this point, to be honest okay. with you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Well, I was going to ask the same thing, but uh, basically, do you have to design for a, a, a tenant or you design generally and then the tenant comes yeah, in? Yeah, it'll be a fully bit. functional restaurant space. Okay. So in the size of the building dictates the type of operation, more of a quick service, you know, fast casual type business. I don't envision it being a, a sit down waitress service, you know. 
um, knowing what I know about the restaurant business, it's going to be a you know, quick service, grab and go, fast, casual type concept. Okay. okay any other questions? Thank you for coming Thank this you. evening. Uh, Stuart, do you have one other? Madam Mayor, one thing I forgot to mention was that the Planning and Zoning Board did review um, the proposed amendment and they did unanimously recommend the approval of this amendment as well. Thank you. Okay. Chair, do you want to take a roll? Councilman Yes. Vice Mayor Berlin? Yes. Councilman Salinas? Yes. Councilman Lindauer? Yes. Mayor Miller? Yes. Thank you. Now we will move on to Ordinance 2020 11, Temporary Promotional Activities. Um, Attorney, where you were for us, please, the title? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 2020 11, an ordinance of the City of Daytona Beach Shores, Florida, relating to temporary promotional activities. Amending the Code of Ordinance Appendix G, Land Development Code, by amending Section 2-2, entitled General Definitions, by amending Chapter 6, entitled Signs and Advertising, by amending Section 14-31.1, entitled GCRD General Commercial Redevelopment District, by amending Section 14-60.2, entitled Temporary Promotional Activity Permits, Standards in the GC1 and GC2 Commercial Districts, and T Hotel Motel District providing for enforcement and penalties, providing for a savings provision, providing for codification, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve this? Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Oh. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on this? The um, only question I would have, Fred, can you come up? Um, if we do gain approval today, when would, would so we, they would need a 30 day permit. Tell me a little bit about the timeline when this could be implemented. Well, this is first reading tonight. Okay. So at our next meeting at the end of the month, mm -hmm. uh, it, if, if the council passes it on the second reading, then it would, you know, could go into an immediate effect it, and, uh, and we could start issuing permits. Um, and, and I think, you know, we could accept some, you know, if there's somebody, you know, I don't know if Bike Tiber Fest got canceled, right? They're but, deciding it tonight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. They probably so, will be. Yeah, probably. So, but if, if somebody wants to do anything, because, you know, people still may come, right. whether they cancel it or not, but we, we could accept the applications and, and review them ahead of time. And then if the council approved it at the end of the month, then we could go ahead and, and, and uh, give them there. We'd be ready, ready to go. Okay. Any other questions for Hyatt? Okay, if not, um, any questions from anyone in the audience on this? Dave, okay, do we have any questions on Zoom? No, ma'am. Thank you. Chair, can you take a roll, please? Councilman yeah. Chris Lowe? Yes. Vice Mayor Bryan? Yes. Councilman Clytus? Yes. Councilman Lindauer? Yes. Mayor Miller? Yes. Thank you. Okay, next we're going to, this is the first time we've had this as, as long as I've been the mayor. So this is consideration a request for a reduction of the code enforcement lane for 137 Sunrise Boulevard. Uh, Gwen Hurston, can you come up please and just give us a brief overview of what took place on the, um, I think special magistrate according to this. Thank you, Madam Mayor, esteemed council members. City Manager Booker and Attorney Carey. My name is Gwen Hurstein and I'm the city's code enforcement coordinator and officer. This agenda item is the result of a request of a Daytona Beach Shores property owner, Mr. Shabtai, who's recently been through the code enforcement special magistrate process, including um, bringing the property into compliance and um, after fines accrued and receiving a reduction from special magistrate De La Roche. Mr. Shabtai, through this particular action, is seeking a further reduction of his fines from the city council. If it pleases the council, I can offer a, about a four minute overview of the case. Then, as I understand it, the property owner is um, available by phone. Okay, thank you. To speak. Do we need an overview of the case? Did everyone read this over in the background? Or, all right. Mm -hmm. Do we feel it's necessary that we want more of an overview? Vice uh, Mayor, you Just, could, just from our reading, it's, this appears to be going back to 2019, am I correct? Yes. That's correct. So this is not just something new. The claims of being uh, stopped by COVID and so forth are a little outlandish, so. Some of the, um, the com gaining compliance period was right smack in, you know, in the heart of COVID, but 
the case originally began in, in August of last year. Although um, the uh, Code Enforcement Office did give them an extended time period beyond the 30 days initially given because they were seeking um, some grants to open their business. They had a tenant that was actively seeking grants and, and trying to figure out how they were going to, you know, satisfy each of the violations and make them compliant. So they were given a little bit of time up front during which nothing happened. It didn't actually see the special magistrate for the first time until January of this year. And I see that there were 16 violations going back to 2019. So that means they had to be going on long before they were finally brought to the attention of the people. So basically the police was neglected for a long period of time. Is that a fair statement? Um, I hope that if a place were neglected that I would be involved, you know, once it was determined that it was. Um, so while some of them, maybe some of the more minor um, violations didn't draw my attention, um, as it got worse and worse, it, it did draw my attention in. And so uh, I'm, maybe one or two things had been existing. I mean, paint doesn't deteriorate overnight, so. Okay, any, any other questions? If not, uh, uh, will the uh, shop ties, are they on the line now and would they like to speak, David? Do they just, and is the, this is the thing I was telling you about at the beginning. So there'll be a four second delay from when they speak till when we can speak. Uh, I know. Okay. Mr. Shap Tye, are you on the line? Yes, yes, Ms. Kirsten. All right. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Ms. Kirsten. Is it Mrs. Shaptai that will speak be speaking to us? Yes, yes. Mrs. Shaptai. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. You can go ahead now. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. My name is Marie Shaptai. Yes, and my husband Levy Shaptai. He's the owner at one thirty-seven Sunrise Boulevard, Daytona Beach Shore. And we're requesting, you know, um, we're requesting uh, the amount um, to go to go as low as uh, two thousand dollars for the fines for a reduction. Okay, Miss Shaptai, can I ask you a question? I understand you do not live here in the shores. Do you, um, when is the last time that you came down pre COVID to check on this property? A uh, month and um, year, well, please, uh, that you checked on the property. Yeah. Well, I have not, and my husband was last there. When were you last there? Uh, three years ago. I think he's saying three years ago. Because I have underlying issues. I, I have underlying issues. I cannot travel because I'm on oxygen. And so does my husband too. And so does my husband Okay. And do you have a property manager or who is managing this property for you since you have not been here for three years? No, I don't know. You don't who have who a manages pool? this property for you, Mrs. Shaptine? Yes, who manages the property. Yes. Who manages the property? No one? No, 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 no one. Well, no, he has a tenant, uh, and he had also uh, a, a tenant previous. Uh, he's been there for 24 years, so I would say that that he uh, he overlooked at the property, and uh, he would uh, call my husband. They would call each other as to you know um, what was going on with the property. Okay, and you did receive the notices from Daytona Beach Shores about these violations? <laughs> yes, yes. You, yes. Okay, yes. all right, thank you. Uh, what other questions do we have for the shaft ties? Okay, um, well, one moment, Mrs. Shaptai, we have a question for, for Gwen. When given, given your history with this, what is your recommendation? The property's compliant now, which is, you know, our office's goal. Um, 
when the um, the special magistrate considered the reduction that he made, he followed the, the state statutes, which are pretty specific. He's supposed to consider the gravity of the violations, the actions taken by the respondent to correct the violations. And then if, there, if it was a statutory repeat, he would also consider that because it can double the amount of the, the daily fine. And that's specifically what he enumerated that he did. He basically lowered um, rather than $250 per day once they had gotten the majority of the violations compliant, which happened kind of in a flurry all at once, about halfway through the fining process, he then lowered the daily fine to $100 per day, and that's how he arrived at that thousand um, 9,700 down from 16,500. So as far as a recommendation, um, he didn't get into um, out loud anyway, any discussion of um, not being able to travel, any discussion of COVID, anything like that. Those are all things that you could tonight consider, could not consider based on, on your pleasure. But as a code enforcement officer, my goal and everything that I do is to get us to compliance and, and I'm specifically kind of not supposed to feel emotional about whether or not fines are reduced. I would tell you that if every fine were reduced to zero, um, I would probably get emotional because I'd have a lot more work to do because there wouldn't be a stick anymore. I will say that I, I'd hope that you would keep in place the administrative fees, which the special magistrate um, implemented and that's $277.85 and that is separate from the accrued fine. Um, I'm hoping that you would keep those in place and because that's a minimum, minimum level of out of pocket costs for the city. It doesn't include staff time which, you know, there has been staff time involved for sure. Extra papers, you know, copies made, things like that. So two, does not include that. Um, no, I'm just looking over that, you know, we all interviewed our special magistrate and I think one of the questions we specifically asked, you know, will you hold to the fines of the city? You know, what will you do? Um, he has a lot more experience on it than I do. I think I'm looking at it right now. That was a $7,000 reduction. Which, uh, very generous. I have a question for, for Gwen. Yes, for Gwen. How, how many fines do we have outstanding in the city? How many fines do we have outstanding at this time? Just roughly. About recent, about six. And then I have some other ones that are um, a few very large ones yeah. that have not moved at all. Um, I'd say probably four more than that. So probably about 10 overall. And some are very small, just the administrative fees, not actual accrued fines. Okay. I can see how if, you, if we're always reducing the fines way down, it reduces the incentive to comply. Sure. And, uh, May I comment, Matt? Certainly. Uh, personally, I find this disgusting. Uh, three years without checking on a property, letting it be basically becoming a slumlord in my opinion. And they've already got a, a reduction from 16,500 to 9,700. So the judge, the magistrate has been very, very lenient. And I think it's absurd for them to ask with all of these violations for all this period of time for us to reduce it further. Uh, I will not vote for a reduction. Right. Gwen, was there a fee for them to come to us this evening? They did pay a $191 fee, which basically covers the staff's time for preparing and coming tonight. All right, okay. I'm of the opinion, close to, close to mail, I will not go any lower than reducing it $700 to $9,000 and even $9,000, but I'm open to no reduction at all. So. Um, because of the time that they did take and, and the fee that they have to pay. Do I hear um, I, I'm, I'm open to no reduction. I second it. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, any other discussion on this? I'm sorry, what was the motion? Uh, my motion was to reduce it to $700 to $9,000. I just said I'm open to no reduction. To no, oh, to no reduction. Okay. Um, so let, let's talk about it. Councilman Politis, it, it's either no reduction of the 700 unless you have uh, No, I, I agree for the 9,000. Okay. 
Okay. I'm also fine with the 9,000, Madam Mayor. Yeah, I'll be, I'll, I'll be okay with the 9,000. Okay. Just, just, just to show. All right. Um, so, so right now we will be reducing it $700. Uh, that'll bring it to a $9,000. Uh, Gwen, do they know when this has to be paid by? Uh, the original reduction needed to be paid by November 12th okay. of this year, or it would revert back to the 16,500. You could keep that in place since that's been yes, the yeah. target. Yeah. Um, my question to you would be, is the 9,000 going to cover the administrative fees owed, or is that separate from the 277 dollars? Separate. Separate. Yeah, separate. separate? Not that, yeah, separate. And I think we want to keep in force that if it's not paid when due, it goes back to the 16. Yes. And um, our recommendation is either the, um, you know, because of health, if they cannot be here, they not need to hire a certified property manager that will check on this property. So um, I had my motion for the 9,000. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Second. Okay. Um, uh, can you take a roll, please? Who made the motion? Was it Mel? Mel. Yeah. No, that's all right. And Vice Mayor seconded. If you can take okay, Councilman Lindo. Yes. Vice Mayor Bryan. Yes. Councilman Flynnis. Yes. Councilman Frizzlow. Yes. Mayor Miller. Yes. Okay, the last Thanks, agenda Council. item we have under new business is naming the tennis court. If you remember last uh, month, uh, Councilman Frizz alone talked about possibly naming it after um, Mayor, our ex-Mayor Don Large, and he, he would like to uh, talk about it again tonight. Uh, yes, uh, speaking to several members of the uh, tennis community and uh, very, very dear friends of Don and Peggy Large, the thought process is uh, given the museum that was named after uh, Don and Peggy, as well as the proclamation that uh, Madam Mayor made for Don and Peggy that uh, we have done enough uh, in terms of recognizing uh, Don and Peggy's large contribution to the city. Uh, and so the, the tennis community feels at this time that uh, tennis is just uh, to be uh, used for fun. It shouldn't be named after anybody. And uh, we, would, we would like to table it uh, uh, for for further discussion, perhaps down the road. But right here, right now, the, the uh, appetite of the tennis community is not to name any tennis courts after anybody. Okay, thank but, you, Councilman. Uh, do I have a concern? Yeah, that's the, that's the feedback I've gotten from uh, it is. Okay. the people yeah. I've talked to. Okay, thank I you. think we, we want to respect the uh, wishes of the tennis community. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I, I agree that we, we did on the dog. Yeah, I, and, and again, the, 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 the folks that I'm speaking to, you know, again, I don't want to name names, but they, they, they love the Larges. They, they had such a phenomenal impact on the service that was uh, that I attended on Saturday. And I know Madam Mayor was there as well, and so was the Vice Mayor. And uh, so, again, it's no disrespect to Don or Peggy Large. It's just that we've done a lot, and, and tennis really is separate and distinct, and, and really it, it doesn't have a place for, for, for naming rights. And, and that's the way the tennis community feels, and I agree with no, we have to respect their wishes. And I respect their wishes as well. Okay, so we have a consensus on that, Sherry. Is there anything else we need? Okay. All right, so right now we're on to council comments. Uh, Vice Mayor, when you make your comments, can you give us an update? Have you been going to TPO meetings or anything new on the meetings there? Yeah, TPO has been having uh, just the uh, uh, virtual meetings. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get public input now. And I guess the bottom line is there hasn't been a tremendous amount of progress that, <laughs> that I've seen in the last uh, three or four months. Uh, there are a couple of things that I brought up last time uh, regarding uh, scooter and electric bike safety. And I thought that they should at least consider whether they want to weigh in on that issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, as to whether they're going to do that or not, I don't know at this point in time. And the other thing I brought up was they're, they're talking about when they can return to in-person meetings. And I told them they should seriously consider the fact that COVID transmission can occur through aerosols and that they should they should take that in consideration in terms of the control they might have over the building. I, I guess I think they're currently renting the building, 
and uh, they may need to make some changes to the air conditioning or, or whatever. So I, I really don't know how seriously they're going to take those two, two suggestions, but hopefully they, they will take them. Thank you. Did you have any additional comments? Yeah, I have a couple outside of the TPO. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Marilyn Wheeler and all the people that worked with her. It was really a great service for Don and Peggy on Saturday. And I know Marilyn worked hard, and I'm sure there are a lot of other people that I don't know about that worked hard on it. Uh, the second thing is uh, I've been asking some questions of Kirk uh, Schwarzlander. You know, we, we thought we had an $800,000 savings, and that, that evaporated. Uh, there's still an outside chance that we can pay off the underlying debt. For those of you who don't understand swaps, they're fairly complicated, but the simple version of it is it's a way of converting variable debt to fixed debt and let, let the uh, counterparty, in this case Bank of America, take the risk of either the risk and reward of either increasing or decreasing uh, interest rates. So there's basically a swap and then there's an underlying debt. And Kurt's initial answer to me was that there are two of the swaps that we could pay off the underlying debt, but he, ne he needs to do more checking. Is that correct? And I asked him to try to get it. Well, not to, hopefully we can get it in writing and hopefully they will cite the parts of the contract that support their answer. Uh, if, if we can pay off, we have three swaps slash underlying debts. One of them is, is the largest as far as savings goes. That's the one that Kurt thinks we can't do, but he, I, I hope he, he will at least check on that and make sure that's the correct answer. The other two, uh, we may be able to pay it off. And there are two, two areas of savings. One, if we just pay off the underlying debt, we don't have to hire a QIR for those, those two, uh, two swaps, if it is two swaps. And secondly, there is a differential between the variable rate and what we're getting on our money. And it's, no, it's not $800,000, but it's not, you know, it's not trivial. It's, it, it could be in the forty dollars or $50,000 range. So there's just some more investigation that needs to be done on that. Thank you. Council, Councilman Lindero. Yeah, uh, Mike, would you just tell the uh, city workers uh, how impressed I am with their attitude, the level of work they do, the quality of work. Uh, I'm just amazed that every time I see different things that they're doing, I'm going, what can't they do? <laughs> so if you would just tell them that uh, at least this city council member is uh, really proud of the work they do and appreciates it. I will. I'm sure they'll appreciate you noticing what they do as well. That's a great group. Councilman Frizzolo? Yes, just to echo that, I, I really would like to, to uh, thank uh, the leadership of uh, our, our city council uh, and city manager, uh, Mike Booker, as well as his entire team, the leadership team that we meet uh, every week, uh, Stuart Cruz, as well as Fred Hyatt, and of course, Kurt Schwarzlander. The four of them uh, have, to Mel's point, uh, have exhibited extreme uh, leadership. Uh, what they've done with the Economic Development Council and the grants that we've done, as well as securing over $700,000 uh, in the bank. Nobody's talked about that tonight, but we got a 700, over $700,000 that we're putting into the bank. Uh, with the sale of that property. But their professionalism uh, is uh, absolutely uh, staggering. And I agree with Mel, the, the city workers are as good as anybody I've ever seen, but I, I cannot thank the four of you more for, for all that you're doing. And, and, uh, and, and Mike, your, your leadership around them is, is absolutely st uh, stellar. Thank you. Councilman Politis. You know, echoing Rick's comments is, it doesn't give it as much credit as he already has. This is what we do. We, we kind of keep an eye on things. We, we listen to everybody. We take into account the citizens' uh, opinions, but the city runs like a clock. And I mean, thank God that we have good department heads and they're all uh, good at what they do. 
and they explain it to us pretty well and we make decisions to support them. And the goal is to bring good to the city, but also make sure that the revenue is properly spent, whatever we bring. And um, you guys are pretty lucky, but we're, we're, we're honored that you get it. Because you go to other city commission meetings, and I used to attend a lot when I, when I was doing that for, uh, for, for clients. And boy, the animosity and the bitterness and the, the back and forth, it was just angst. Listen, we all have opinions and we're all entitled to our opinions, but sometimes people don't get what they want, but hopefully the decision is made for the good of the majority. And that's, you know, I'm glad to sit up here with you guys and do the best I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't have any comments except uh, the census is coming to an end. So uh, everyone, please fill out the census. Um, uh, that's all I have right now. Do you have an audience? I will go on to audience comments now. Do you have an audience comment as well? Yes, thank you. Yeah, Rick Brown. You yeah, know me quite well. Yeah. I, I, I got to agree with uh, Councilmember uh, uh, Politis that, uh, you know, you guys have been very professional. Um, I don't agree with all your decisions like many citizens don't, but you know, the professionalism is very, very important. So I appreciate it. I hope we don't end up enemies, nope. even though we don't, don't agree on everything. Now, well, <clears throat> I always say we can disagree without being disagreeable. That's yeah. a good point. Um, <clears throat> that said, Mayor, I would really like you to expand upon uh, your comments to include, if you recall in a previous meeting pre-COVID, that I discussed uh, technology in the city and getting this on the TV channel. And I understand just from hearsay, but I'd rather hear from you, that there is some progress being made. And I'd like to hear you expand upon that uh, about, because quite frankly, I'm embarrassed that Daytona Beach Shores is one of the few communities that doesn't have government TV. Thank you. And, and some of you guys yeah. look better with masks yeah. and some of you look better <laughs> without masks, but um, that said, and then the other comment was, uh, I talked to you about also expanding on the EV uh, charging, if you recall. Yes, and yes. I, I will point out that I was not able to charge my vehicle tonight at the meeting because it's already full. So, thank you. Um, uh, the first thing is when I took office, I, I said I would be here to listen to everyone. I might not agree with what you say, but you'll be treated with respect that you're due as a citizen. So I've kept up that promise and, and I always will. As far, I don't think it would be quite a government uh, TV. What we're going to be doing is a live feed. So we're looking into that. We are very, very close to making a decision on that. Hopefully within the next month, we'll have an answer on that. And that was exactly my words to our RT director. Can we get in the 20th century? I can watch <laughs> Port Orange online. I can watch South Daytona online. What happened to the shores? So thank you very much for your comment. We will, um, uh, hopefully within the next month, we'll, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Oh, that's great. Okay. That's great. That's great. Yes. Nice thank job. you. Sure. EV. Oh, EV, um, I will have to talk to our city manager yeah, about. There currently are no plans to expand that. Okay. Um, there's not a few in the cry from people with electric vehicles at this point, but okay. uh, you know, it's always possible that we can expand the EV. Okay, thank you. All right, do I have any other audience comments? Marilyn? I'd just like to uh, say that Warren Lassen was just as involved as yeah. I was in the memorial for um, Thank you, Marilyn. Yeah. Okay, do I have any other remarks? Okay, if not, what items do we have for the agenda except the second reading of the budget and anything else? Um, right now, any agenda items? Fantastic. Hopefully, Kurt will have the answers to those uh, questions and we can discuss okay. whether right. or not to and do anything. Kurt, you know exactly what you're going to be checking for and doing. Okay, thank you. Hey, anything else? If not, the meeting is adjourned. All right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.